Just a few more last minute things to finish up on here. Um, I decided I'm gonna go ahead and take the car today. Uh, just so I don't have to rush through things. Um, I had a few issues like my trailer wire had melted through. I was having problems with my turn signals. I didn't know why, but the trailer wire had all melted through and the wires were just touching everywhere. Um, so I gotta address this issue. Um, just little tiny things. I gotta put the air filter box back on. That's no big deal. Um, still setting the idle on it there. Uh, a couple of wires came off of different things to shut down. I gotta rewire that. I just wanna go through and take care of a couple little things before I hit the road. I don't wanna be rushed to do it. So I'll head to Ohio for a couple days, finish up that job, come back, and then take two or three days here at home before I hit the road again. That way it'll give me a little bit of time in vacation. I have a little bit of coolant leak on that hose up there. I need to tighten that down. So little things like that, and I just don't want to be in a rush. It should be good. And then I can take it somewhere and get it all steam cleaned once it's all buttoned back up. Don't have to worry about water. Yep. A sticky throttle so I lubed up all the linkage with some aerocoil. Uh, this stuff's amazing if you've never used it before. Um, just hit, hit the different little joints and then where it goes back into the tube there uh, and now it works on its own. At first it was running it stuck he, he gave a little throttle and it stuck so to try to free it he pushed it down further and then it just got stuck further so I pulled the pedal up and it made it stop it but uh, yeah I just lubed it up now it's all responsive on its own so in just a little bit here a couple more things to do and we should be able to have this thing Going for a little test drive around the lot here. The shutdown's not working because somebody moved it out of the way. So we just need to loosen it. Just gonna show, have you moved it yet or no? I haven't moved it yet. The washer just broke off of it. So the little air cylinder couldn't touch it. It wouldn't make contact with it. Oh, well, maybe I do. It was already, it was already on on. Now it's on off. All right, on. It's quiet. Just 
flick it a few times and see how it responds. Stuck. Okay. We'll continue to work on that. One thing that I didn't lube up was that part right there. Shut it down, test the shutdown. Okay. So nail that pedal all the way to the floor right now. So it's just not returning all the way. Okay. So I'll keep lubing. Ready to start it. We're gonna air it up and then move it. So push that throttle pedal down. It shouldn't, yeah, so there's no difference there, but if you give it a little throttle and then let go. Huh. Alright, we'll keep working on that. Use your heel on it right now. Just like that. <laughs> That's the torque. Yeah. I've never, my other buses have never, well, they're transverse. Did yeah. you feel that? Uh huh. That's some juice. Push, push the clutch in. There's no air pressure right now. Much of a help. What's it at right now, air wise? 20. Give her some air. Yeah, go ahead. You don't trust the high fast idle? No, I do not. Go ahead, pick it up. Touch in. See if you can get it to go into first. Okay, it's easier now. Is that second? Go to second. Second anymore, it won't go back to two. Going up to 
Okay. You got the brake? I don't like you being between. Have you released the brake? Yeah. Okay. You want this door closed a little bit so you don't rip it off if you have a if you're in reverse instead of second. clutch out in second? I can. Let's see if it'll roll it off just a little bit. We only want to go forward a foot. Brakes are on still. Oh, they haven't been released. Yeah, they're off. Let's go for second then. Reverse. That shouldn't have been there. That was reverse. So something's going off the reverse solenoid. So stop right now. Go ahead and shut it off. That's what I was afraid of. It's okay. We learned it before you went off the blocks. So the reverse solenoid, they must have parked it in reverse and it's stuck right now. So we got to get it to go back. That's what the problem is. Take it back to neutral right now. Now brakes are not on. Set your brakes. Okay. I, don't, I need a tool to do that. Just Push the bottom up while you lift on the top. There's a, there's a little pin that sticks out at the bottom. Got it. Yeah, go ahead and start it. What was that? Starter didn't engage or something. I got those rear doors open. Let me go close them. Put it in first. That's a good sign. I don't have enough air, I think, to get the brakes on. What are you at? 16. It's coming up quick. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Let it build up. You got to step on it to get it to release. Probably should wait until I have a little bit more. Yeah, because if you need to use them, you want them. Is it pretty much stopping itself? Yeah. Do you feel like the brakes are sticking? Yeah. You're still in a hole. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. All right, go ahead and come on forward. Just a little bit. Okay, go ahead and stop there for a second. Set your parking brake. Close this door and you think you can do a circle without remembering you don't have reverse. I don't think I can turn a circle. We'll try. You want to try for reverse here? I have to use the solenoid. Uh, go forward off those blocks before you do that. So go forward like five feet. For reverse. Your brakes are on.
It's okay. I had, a fe I had a feeling of that because of how hard it was. Yes. The brake. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and release your brakes. You got to step on it too, right? Gotta close, close this door. Test your brakes hard. Nice. I think come forward about ten more feet. Can you just let off the clutch without using the throttle? A little bit more. Yeah, you don't have to slip the clutch that much by adding throttle first. You should be able to just release that clutch. After you jacked on them hard. This isn't rolling anywhere. I found that strange. Yeah, you look like you're downhill a little bit, like it should want to roll. Step, mash the brake hard and then release. There it goes. Okay, stop. Back to neutral. So it's, it won't go into first, so it's stuck in reverse. Smoking big time. I'm gonna go tap there. Yeah. Just taking it for a little test drive. Lance driving his bus for the First time on a road, going right across it. <laughs> Lots of space down there. Yep, I'm gonna try for a second.
neutral and set the parking brake. Come on out. Yeah. Oh, let's keep it in my hair. <laughs> Put your hand on there so you can figure out where it's coming from. Uh -oh. Okay. They're open tomorrow? Yeah. Good. We're going to shut it off. We're just losing fluid. Okay, I'm with Lance. I'm back. <laughs> Tell us about what happened today with your bus. How'd it go? Today was, uh, well, I, I actually called Jennifer, my wife, and I said, baby, you know how I tell you whenever you replace everything, you just need to replace all of it because the weakest link is going to blow up? And she's like, let me guess, something <laughs> blew up today. And yeah, so as you probably saw in the video, um, Scott came on over from Indianapolis this morning, and I got there about seven o'clock and replaced all of the high pressure hydraulic lines with regard to the power steering in the back of the MC5 we're working on. And I kind of got my feelings hurt because I couldn't get a certain fitting on and I went and did something else and then Scott did it in about five seconds. He reached in there blindly. He's like, oh, oh I got it. And I asked him not to tell me that he did it so I wouldn't be mad. But then I asked, did you do it? And he said, yeah, I did it about five seconds. And then I went and Rumpel still skin through a little fit. <laughs> but yeah, we were driving the bus. Um, we worked hard on it today. We uh, got it cranked up. Uh, we had some issues with the reverse in the video. I'm sure you know, Scott maybe mentioned that. The reverse, reverse solenoid was stuck. It would When the people brought the bus in 10 or 15 years ago, they had it reversed and they pulled it in and they left it there. No fault of theirs. They left it in gear and uh, it kind of corroded. <laughs> And uh, we beat the hell out of it and uh, got it still doesn't work. We can get it in reverse if we need to, but uh, we decided to take it for a drive right before the sun went down and uh, just real short little run. And as we dropped into second gear and I gave her some juice and I need to tell you for a bus that's been sitting 15 years, it really spun up pretty good. I was impressed with how it spun up. and. Then there was the steering wheel all of a sudden jerked to the left real <laughs> fast and you could hear it in the video. We didn't know it at the time where it blew, but I was pretty sure something had let go. And by the time we got the turn, the bus turned back around. Yeah, but. So tomorrow morning we'll get up. Thank goodness here in Marion, Ohio, there's a place called Chappies that you all saw in a video a couple weeks ago. The place with all the really cool stuff. We'll go in there and they'll make us four lines and we will have a complete, we will not have any hoses on the bus that I'm aware of that carry any pressure, am I correct, Scott? That's correct. We won't have any, every hose in the bus will be new. Uh, thank goodness there's a place here um, that I was able to find uh, here in Marion, Ohio, that was able to do that. So tomorrow morning, we're gonna place those lines and I bet you'll be seeing us uh, going from here to Columbus, to Cincinnati, to Louisville. That's our goal for tomorrow. Anything uh, else? No, yeah, tell, tell the story about uh... The time I got to be a bus grease monkey? Yeah. Oh, I will. I'll be glad to tell the story. <laughs> so a couple weeks ago, you heard my stories about how Scott helped me for years and uh, uh, would always come to my rescue and we worked on my, my Miss Budweiser, my 4106. So a couple years after we met, it was a, uh, um, there was a, it was a January night. It was in January, it was like the middle of January and my phone rang. It was Scott. I'm like, oh man, maybe Scott's coming through town. <laughs> and uh, he's like, hey, call me. <laughs> and I called, I called him and he said, Hey, I'm broke down on the side of the road in Kentucky. Uh, can you help me? <laughs> and, uh, I was so excited cause this was my chance to help the guy that had been helping me. And my wife, Jennifer was like, you get going, you go help Scott. He's helped us with everything. So, uh, what had happened was Scott, you can help explain a little bit. It, it was Scott, the guy again, making this Scott was broke down. And he said, uh, uh, what happened? Your your radiator, your your fan hub came apart? My fan came off. It went right through the radiator. It went right through the radiator. And he may have posted this video, but it went through and sliced it. It was something you have to see. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> but I didn't know that. And he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I went to Lowe's in Nashville and I bought all these torches and I bought all this solder. And he had gotten to a rest area in Kentucky. And I came rolling up. And of course, a bus broke down in a rest area is, is a real, uh, everyone was kind of looking around, what are these guys doing? I don't know how many hours we did spend at that, but we, on that radiator, we separated every, what are those called, the horizontal pieces? 
that the water runs down through. Tube? Every horizontal tube on that radiator, we took and spread apart. We took a knife and broke it apart because the blade had cut it and like, you know, sheared them off. We took every single piece, we spread it with a knife, and then we filled every one with solder, squeezed it. I don't know how long it took us, a couple hours. It was. Two or three hours, we went through that whole thing. And uh, he drove it home that night to Indianapolis. I think you had to, what did you have to do? You had to stop and uh, fill it up with a hose every, the every, or something? Every 50 miles, I had to keep adding, because even though we had it soldered, it was still leaking. And I could make it about 50 miles before I'd have to fill it up. And that was on this spot. That was on... Um, that was on Lenny. On Lenny. He's only ever broke down one time, knock on wood, on the road. And, and I got to save him. You did. I got to go do it. So <laughs> that was a true American bus grease monkey story. And we worked our butts off today. So I'm having a Budweiser and <laughs> um, enjoying this beautiful evening. And... Uh, Anyways, I wanted to tell you that story. It was a good story. Yeah, awesome. he he saved. He really helped me out because I didn't have a way of getting in. I didn't have solder with me. I didn't have a propane torch to do it. And we got it home. How many miles did we drive? You drive home that night? I was two hundred. I was like two hundred, two hundred and something, two hundred fifty miles. I was right. I was at exit one rest stop into Kentucky from Tennessee. Yeah, he was at the Welcome Center. Yeah, they were loving that. <laughs> Cooling everywhere. Guys soldering. It was something. <laughs> We we pulled, home. Yeah, we pulled the fan out. We sawed the fan blade tips down. It was crazy. It worked. I love getting calls like that. So if anyone's near Nashville and that happens, you can call me. <laughs> or for a mortgage. Yes, or for a mortgage. <laughs> now, thank you for the plug again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do look like this when I do mortgages, though. They'll be disappointed. I, yeah, I have a suit and tie. And you can check us out at studiobank.com if you want to check that out. <laughs> studiobank.com, we're the first new bank in Tennessee in 10 years. It's pretty cool. Awesome. Thank you again. No problem, brother. So we stopped at Menards this morning. We needed to get some oil dry to clean up that mess we made in the parking lot last night. Because we're good, responsible bus grease monkeys. Yeah, that's right. And then uh, I borrowed, I used these for Tyler's the other day, and he told me they sell them at Menards. The, uh, they just worked amazing, the, the way that the cam action works on them, and they grab tight. I really like them. And uh, they were like 40, 40 bucks. So not, not on the cheap tool side, but they really grabbed them for adjustable kind of pair of pliers. But good quality. Okay. So, so yesterday was a bittersweet day as we drive this morning to work on the buses from all that mess. But I got a text last night from Jay and said, got some not so good news. My MC8 that we rescued last year has fixed windows, and uh, there was another bus here last year that's since gone, but I bought all the windows out of it. It was $1,000 for all good glass sliders on an MC8, so that way I could, you know, park or use it, and, just, and maybe in the fall have the windows open without having to buy peninsula windows or something. So last night, right before we blew the hydraulic line, we get a text from Jay, not so good news. My guys just cut a turn and the, every single window fell off the pallet loader and broke every single window. So now I don't have any windows to figure this out. But hey, this is life on as a bus junkie. I shoot up with bus every day and it's just a little bit of a crash. Well, we'll figure. If anybody else has some sliders for an MC8, please contact me or, or Scott. We're doing a really good glass guy that can do it for less than a thousand. So there's a, there's a. Let's go do the oil dry first. Yeah, let's go clean up our mess. Oh shit. And uh, here she is. Here's uh, I haven't named her yet. Iron Man. She held air overnight. She held air fine. Well, let's get started. See what we can get done. Yeah, when that's closed, it's not going to let any air in. It's kind of a sealed compartment. So I got the hydraulic lines off. There's the one that was broken. It was real brittle. The rest of them, they looked really good shape compared to the ones in the back, especially. But looks can be deceiving. And uh, Lance has got the destination glass out right now. And there's two giant bird's nests and a whole bunch of wasp nests up there. Nice clean track. I could probably get the glass in pretty easy. It's perfectly clean. Yeah. It's fiberglass. Huh. So we got all the bay doors back on. Another step towards heading down the road. Looks a little better too. So 
he fixed the hinges that were broken on the rear doors and that front door had a broken hinge that he fixed also that little driver compartment we have a little bit of a coolant leak you can see it under there that's from overnight it's a I haven't quite figured out where it's coming from though don't see anything wet in there the only thing even remotely wet that I've seen is this little hose has a drip on it there but I haven't seen it actually drip off bus up on some ramps. Lance freezing up the couple things under there for us. The drive shaft and the brake cans.
drive doesn't turn into a circle, does it? That? Yeah.
Right there. Got the egg. Just finishing picking up. There it goes. Radiator's 100% full, so if you see some fluid coming out of that right, that's just the overflow. Once it heats up, it's going to kick a little bit more out. in at a truck stop I went ahead and fueled up and we shot all the temperatures on his and right above the thermostats was 183 on both uh, engine oil level was a little bit above full but it was at a weird angle when I filled it this morning so I think it's just got a little bit extra oil in it so here he comes gone about a hundred miles already. Cruising on down the highway. Going about 65 miles an hour. Followed him all the way to Cincinnati. Bus had no issues whatsoever. From Cincinnati, I headed back north to Indianapolis, where I made it back home. Um, and then tomorrow, I'm going to get my bus on the road and get it uh, the engine break-in process started. 
Uh, he's going to have a friend meet him in Louisville tomorrow and follow him all the way back to Nashville. And, uh, but he should make it no, no problem. The bus did great. It was running real strong, climbed all the big hills, no problem. Uh, it did great. If you get a chance to click the subscribe button, I would appreciate it. And stay tuned for a video of my bus tomorrow, getting the last minute tweaks and then getting it on the road for the break-in procedure.